Hi guys, how are you? Good thanks, Senator, and you? Yeah, good thanks. Um, I want to talk about the Gen Cost report. Uh, last time, I think we caught up uh, last time, Peter, um, we had a discussion about that, and there was an assumption in there that transmission costs weren't going to kick in until renewables hit 50% of the grid. Does that assumption still apply in, in the report, or has that been modified? No, we're still talking about um, needing the, a much greater um, degree of firming once you get past 50%. So up to that, a lot of it doesn't need that. Um, and um, you know, both transmission lines and storage being required beyond 50%. Okay, because we, I mean, we've got a $20 billion rewiring Australia fund that's that's available. Well, I think it's almost available now, subject to you know getting it up and running. That doesn't make sense. I mean, how can you assume that there's no more transmission costs until you hit 50% of the grid if you're not going to actually include the rewiring Australia fund of 20 billion? So, um, so, so Senator, if, if I if you go to the um, the work that AEMO does in the integrated system plan, yeah. you'll see that there is transmission lines in all their planning going out. Yeah. Um, so it's a lot of it's already incorporated. So we actually take that into account when we look at our work. So they have plans to, to, to strengthen the grid in that regard. Yeah. There is storage being input to the grid already, and that's part of their plan. So they can see those things. So we're talking about, do you need to do additional? OK, so, so you have included the costs of transmission and, and recycling in the GenCot report? It's, it's, it's in the ISP work um, that AMO do. Um, we're just looking at purely at the technology costs for each individual technology yeah. and then doing, doing that for different scenarios in time and the level of um, uh, renewable penetration. So, uh, okay, because yeah. I'm, try I'm trying so, to put some so figures around. So we're not trying to do the, the full solution to Australia's grid. That's and what we're not trying the, to do. Yeah. The yeah. rewiring Australia funding is more about addressing the issue that Senator McDonnell was concerned about to actually connect up these remote regional um, sites to the, to the backbone, but also to give more interconnection um, because with a distributed power generation like renewables, it's a huge advantage in being able to share energy um, between yeah, different sites. Yeah, I, I understand that. So, but that's but when people say renewables are cheaper, I want to know that that's based on if they're using the Gen Cost report as their assumption, you know, as their basis. Are those costs included in the Gen Cost report? So, when, when we look at the tables, we yep. factored in, in in the context in which I've provided to you already, um, and we see those costs increasing quite a bit as you go into the higher penetration levels, because that's where you'll start finding limitations in sure. the grid. Sure. Okay. The and then how are recycling costs treated? So I know this has been stated before as well, that yeah. um, in regards to lithium batteries, for example, the cost of recycling lithium batteries is three times the cost of metal going into it. Have, we, have those recycling costs come down, number one, and are they included in the gen cost report? Is it, you know, yeah. whole of so, life? So some of these costs aren't there yet. Um, we, trying to understand them better. Um, so if you can identify a very large lump sum cost at end of life of, of something, yep. then we try to incorporate that where we can. Uh, but some of them at this point in time, um, they're smaller or they're harder to define. So again, as we evolve the work that we do, we'll take those into account more and more. Okay, thank you. So to get to 43% reduction in CO2 by 2030, um, my understanding is you've got to get to 82% renewables in, on the energy grid, is that correct? Uh, the gen cost work doesn't really address that directly, but um, it's looking at global. Okay, scenarios. well, outside yeah. the gen cost yeah. report, it, are you in a position to yeah. confirm that's true? Um, we'd have to do some uh, do some modelling work on that um, to sort of firm, get you an answer. But at this stage, we're we're just looking at the technology costs for each individual technology. Right. Okay. Because that's okay. Because I guess that was my question. Um, is to get to the 43% reduction in CO2 by 2030, how, yeah. how many batteries, how many kilometres of yeah. transmission and lines, how many solar panels, etc. These, et cetera, et these cetera. are the sort of things, there's a range of scenarios that AEMO look at in the integrated system plan where they're trying to project forward to sort of say, they've got, a, you know, they've got five scenarios I think it is that they look at, and depending on um, which one of them it is, they'll determine how much more um, PV they need, how much storage, all those sort of parameters. So that's the best guidance that can give you at this stage. Okay, so, so I, I need to go to AMO to get there. Are you the, aware the of that? ISP is, 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 is available on, on their website. Right, so it's an ISP, right. Okay, yeah. so, so have they sort of got a roadmap to 2030 in terms of costs and all that sort of stuff? Um, Are you aware? Sorry, I know. They, it may their not ISP be work, uh, I guess they do every couple of years and look forward. Uh, and I think they're looking all the way out to 2050. 
Uh, I don't know that they've done a specific piece of work for 2030, but it's, it'd be incorporated in the 2050 outlook. So um, I think it's, I'd start there, Senator. Right, yeah. okay. Thank you. Well, yeah, thanks. Yeah, thank you, thank you very much, thanks, guys. Senator. Authorised G. Rennick, LMP Chermside.